sermon, so. shoved into a school gym. That's why we set up on Friday nights. And this morning, we're finishing our series. So if you're a guest with us this morning, we just spent 15 weeks walking through the entire Old Testament, really just the Pentateuch. And if you know me as a preacher, you know that that's almost a sin, uh, because I go nice and slow. But we flew, and we looked at the faith of God's people. But as God created us for a relationship, He created us to know Him, to be known by Him, and to be known through Him. And we looked at all sorts of different stories with very similar ideas. That God made us a promise, and this season at Christmas we're celebrating the promised child, the peace that he's given us. And, and I just think we live in a world right now, and I'm probably not in school that Nick asked me to take a picture, because I'm like, I am 110% anti-selfie sticks. So if you have a selfie stick, I don't want to offend you. I remember being on vacation years ago, and I looked at my wife, and I said, what are those things? She said, oh, I heard about those things are selfie sticks, where you point a stick, and you guys know what a selfie stick is, right? Is it in the dictionary yet? It should be. Right? As a noun. And, and you kind of get this thing and you take a picture of yourself. And here's my fear. In the world that we live in today, where selfie sticks are in the dictionary, we become the main character of our life. Look at social media. I'll just tell you how great I am. Look at my social media page. And I, I thought it was kind of funny as I was reflecting on that this week because my picture from social media is a few years old. Right? Is that true for some of you? I was a little skinnier then. I think I was a little better looking. There was only two kids in my life instead of three. And it's amazing how life changed. With social media, we want to portray something about us as the main character of our life. And in Vintage Grace, we don't believe we're the main character of our life, right? Who is? God! That God gave us our life. He gave us the breath in our lungs. And now we live a life that He has designed for us to experience how great He is. That's the message of Christmas. It's not selfie sticks. If you have one, it's okay. We're doing a burning party later. <laughs> I don't care if you have a selfie stick. I'm just saying remind yourself what Christmas is about. And it's not just ugly sweaters, although that is wonderful. Grant, you look good, my friend. It's about the goodness of God, how great he is that he came to us. If you have your Bibles, I want you to pull them out to Hebrews chapter 11. And in Hebrews chapter 11, what we see, because I'm not going to do a typical sermon. We're going to do kind of a review of the last 15 weeks. We're going to do it really quickly because the review is actually found in Hebrews chapter 11. And, and we call it the Hall of Faith. It's a list of people who recognize that they weren't the main character in their life, that God was, and what God does in and through their life. Here's what the text says. Here about what? Hebrews 11. We're going to fly. Here's the text. Life is about faith. We call it OST, ongoing spiritual transformation. But life is about faith. And faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For it's the people of old who received their commendation. They got their reward because of their faith, which we believe the vintage is a gift from God. That God gave them the gift of faith, that God revealed to them, that God showed them that slip covers don't suffice. Remember that 12 weeks ago? That God showed them that if they cover themselves with a fig leaf, it won't be good enough to cover their sin. They needed something far better covering. They needed the promised peace. They needed Jesus to come. But because of their faith in Jesus and in God, the reward was going to come. And by faith we understand that the universe was created the Word of God. We started there, Genesis 1-1. Remember, in the beginning, God. Because the story's not about us, it's about God. In the beginning, God created the universe so that what is seen is not made out of things that are visible. Verse 6 says this way, without faith, without trusting God, because it's all about having faith in the right thing. I have lots of friends, they have faith in all sorts of things. I've told you, I've confessed, I've repented of my faith in the 49ers. And what that does to me, if you have faith in the wrong thing, it doesn't matter the strength of your faith, it matters the strength of the object. But without faith in God, it's impossible to please Him. See, that's my fear even when we take offerings, is we think we're paying off, this was my theology of giving for years, I'm paying off my Jesus debt. And then I realized that that's impossible to pay off, that Jesus didn't want my money, He's God, He wants my heart. 
Well, yes, my heart, he has some of my money too, because I recognize it's all his. But he says, for whoever wants to draw near to God must believe. You want to please God? Believe him. Trust him that he exists, and that he rewards those who seek him. And remember Noah, by faith Noah being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear he constructed the ark and saving of his household. By this faith, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. The text continues on. He says, by faith, Abraham, remember we went to Adam and Eve, created for relationship. They fell. Then we went to Noah. Then we went to Abraham. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive his inheritance. Remember when he gets there, the land of Canaan, and he gets to the land, he looks around, and there's other people there. God sometimes makes promises to us, and we don't know what that looks like, and we tend to doubt and be concerned and fear. God, did you really want me here? Is this really what you had for me? But he knew where he was going, so by faith he went to live in the land of the promise. He was a foreigner in the land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builders is God as the main character. By faith, Sarah. Remember Sarah? Really, really young Sarah. That God said, you're going to have a child. And they said, no, no, no. And Abraham blew it with, with his, his maidservant. But by faith, Sarah received power to conceive even when she was past age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead. Now, now you know that, right? You, you read that line again. I want to read that too quick. They were so old that they were what? As good as dead. God has a plan for you. Even when you think you're as good as dead, there were born descendants of many of the stars in the heaven and as many as innumerable grains of the sand of the seashore. We went from Abraham, from going to the land of earth, from conceiving, and then we also continue with Abraham in a story that changed my life. We're going to hear another story of that today where Abraham offered up his son Isaac when he received the promise, was in the act of offering of his only son, and he said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named, and he considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead. From which figuratively speaking, he did because he got them back. By faith, Isaac invoked future blessing on Jacob and Esau. And by faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed the sons Joseph. Remember, Joseph came and visited us. Remember that? Best looking Joseph I've ever seen. Have I told you he was handsome? Joseph came and lived with us and talked to us. And by faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the activities of the Israelites and gave directions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, he then went to Moses. When he was born, he was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God who were his than enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. He stayed focused on the joys that before. By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who was invisible. By faith he kept the Passover, God did, and sprinkled the blood from the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch him. Do you remember all of these stories? Fifteen weeks of these stories over and over and over again of God's grace, of his work, and of our faith. Now, do you see the big word in the text this morning? Anybody miss it? I said it 17 times. Faith. Guys, that's what this morning is all about. We celebrate the faith that God has given us. By faith that people crossed the Red Sea. It's by faith that the walls of Jericho fell. It's by faith that Rahab invited people into her house because she saw what God was doing and said, I want to be a part of it. Does that describe us this morning, church? Recognizing what God is doing and wanting to be a part of it. But here is my fear every single Sunday morning. You come at Vintage Grace, you listen to a bald man yell at you about Jesus. Over and over and over again, and here's my fear. You start to miss the message. One of my greatest fears as a preacher, and I love preaching, is that it becomes informational and not transformational. It just becomes stories. And we miss that the only thing that saves us is what, church? Our faith. Faith we're saved. Every story this entire season has told us by faith we are saved. And this is what I want us to know. I want us to know that we this morning gather together that we too, if we have that faith, are in what I would call the Hall of Fame. Because it's not about how good of a Christian you are. I hate that phrase. I hate it. Christian is a sinner saved by grace. We are broken. We are messed up. And if we just hear the information, we think, well, we got to change. we got to be better. we got to do more. we got to give more. You know what that sounds like to me? 
It sounds like church growing up. It sounds like guilt. It sounds like shooting on people with the D, should. We don't do that in the church. We believe that God gives us faith, that God gives us joy in Jesus, that God gives us opportunity to not punt, to flex our faith, to walk through the doorpost that he covers with his blood, and to live out the gospel. And that's why I love being your pastor. I love it. I have the best job in the world. Because we in faith believe that God and love saved us. And we gather to celebrate that. But may we never have it be information we want to be transferred. So what we do every Sunday is we try to tell stories. No! Stop! Because <laughs> we try to tell stories of faith. <laughs> Second service will be better, guys. <laughs> we try to tell stories of faith. And what I don't want you to miss as we read the Bible is we're like, oh, that's a good story. No, no, no. Your life is a story. And maybe you're like, I've been in church forever. I don't know what you're talking about. I haven't read the Bible in forever. Right now, God has you here to continue his story in your life. I want to make you pull out a pen, paper, in your worship folder. There are no sermon notes because I just preached. That's the sermon. Fastest sermon ever. Everybody said Amen. Amen. We're not done, don't worry. <laughs> but there's a sermon on your thing that says, this is my story. And my hope is this fall, we heard lots of stories of faith, but my hope is that we start to recognize what is our story. That it starts with God. That it, that it is our sin and it's our brokenness, but it's his faithfulness to us. So I want to play a song about our story, and I want you right now to take a moment and write your story. Write what God has done in your life. We're going to tell stories later this morning. Right in your last fall, the last four months, maybe it's been through the series, maybe it's been through your life group, maybe it's just that you're here. You don't even know what the next step in your story is. You just know you're at church for the first time in a long time. Well, we're all journeying with Jesus. So we're going to play this song, and while it's played, I want you to take a minute and think about this fall. How is God growing your story? What has he done in your life? Because here's what happens. We get busy in Christmas. We don't stop. We don't listen. We don't reflect. Let's reflect right now as a church. What has God done in our life? Spend some time and start writing your story. What has God done? Maybe it's been sin. Maybe it's been suffering. Maybe it's been coming back to church. What has God been doing in your life? If I told you my story
praises my song, praising my Savior all the day long. We believe it's really simple that your story is like my story, is like these guys' stories, that our story is that while we're still yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's what we celebrate this morning and every day, that God has given us life. So in His grace, we don't like to just speak sermons. We like to hear stories. Your stories, our stories, and how we're growing in our faith. And, and I've heard stories from you three, and I'm thanking you for being up here, for sharing part of your story. Because you guys are sinners, right? You're messed up scumbags. Is that an accurate description, family members? But saints because of God. So Andy, your story here, again, you, were, I mean, you all back to like Adam and Eve in the sense that you were born into a Christian home. And you came to Vintage Grace, I don't know, how long ago was it now? Hello? All right, cool. Um, almost a year. I've been here for almost a year. About a year ago. And God's been continuing your story. Tell us about your story, how it's been developing. All right, um, here we go. When I came to Vintage Grace, I, I had, I was satisfied with my faith. I was satisfied with my faith, but I wasn't, I was craving more of a relationship with God. There was something missing, and I wanted more of a relationship with God. I, um, I gotta clear one thing up real fast. When I'm freaking out, like I start crying, and I'm on the threshold of freaking out. Right? <laughs> so uh, here we go. Sorry, that took a little more time than I needed to. Um, basically, I was craving. I was craving way but I was satisfied with my faith and what I mean by that is I didn't see myself like illuminating the light of God like I thought I should so we start so we started this uh, series called desiring God and that was like a I, I described it as like a tread I was on a treadmill and it was also a roller coaster at the same time and I was stuck on it I was I was I was trying to I was trying I had to rethink about how I thought about God how I approached my relationship God with God and how that all how that all came together yeah. so I had this question of what is righteousness and this righteousness that I thought of I thought I knew and I I understood righteousness as a gift that I received from God as, by grace through faith and I thought okay I, I got that you know I, I, I understand this thing so I took this faith that I had, and we went into this promise series, and I thought, oh, I'm going to get so much information about God in this Old Testament like I've never experienced it before. This is going to be so sweet. I got my faith that I proclaimed when I was five years old, and I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to, I'm going to learn all about this faith. So we got into this Adam and Eve story. I'm way off on my notes, but uh, we got into this Adam and Eve story, and I started, see, I started hearing people talk about like trusting that God's better is better. And I started, I started thinking, man, you know, I wish Eve really, really kind of kept that. I wish she thought God's better was better because I understand this and I understand that I'm broken and I understand that it's just a gift that God gave to me for this, for my faith, I guess. I'm kind of losing it, sorry. But then I realized, I, we got to Abraham, so I, I didn't get it. I didn't get Adam and Eve. We got, to, we, got to Ad, we got to Abraham, and I heard these words that said, God told Abraham to go, so he went. And I started thinking to myself, I don't go. I don't ever go. And I was sitting in the middle, a couple rows back, and I started crying. I started crying because I thought, you know, I don't go when God tells me to go. I complain. I drag my feet, I say, I know better than that, I'm not going to do that, and I picked up my faith again and go, oh yeah, I'm so glad that God gave me righteousness. I still, I still didn't get it. Huh. So Drew, Drew called, goes, hey, can you share your story? And I go, oh no. Because <laughs> when God calls, he says no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I, 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 I'm running out of time here, sorry. But I said, I'm, I said, I, I realized I don't trust God. I said, I don't trust God that all the, I thought about all these times in my life that I said, no, I'm not going to do that. And I'm crying and I'm crying and I'm crying. And I got up and I walked out and said, oh, my faith has got me covered. 
when Drew asked me to come up here and say, share your story, I realized that I didn't trust God at all, and I didn't have any faith. The faith that I was relying on through this entire time was empty and hollow. I realized that my heart didn't have the faith because I didn't trust God's better was better. I realized that by loving God, you submit to God, and that's how you gain your righteousness. And everybody said? And I'm pretty confident that story sounds like many of ours, right? I got it, I got it, I got it. And then we look at what faith looks like and we go, oh man, I'm not even close. And then we all said, but God. So Eric, you, you're similar. Now for you, it was, it was big picture. It was actually more related to work this last fall. Yeah. Trusting God yeah. that is better and better with work. What did that look like for you? Well, first, I'm a straight line kind of guy. I just get in and I get it done and I just signed up for the setup team. So if I offended any of you guys, I apologize. Yeah, there were some mistakes I meant to tell you. Not this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Last week. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the thing that really stuck out to me, uh, this, uh, going through this series was the Exodus. When they left Egypt, it was not a straight line. It took, was that, like two years? And it could have taken six months. And I, would not, I'm, I don't understand that at all. <laughs> and so God knows that. And, uh, and so he just, going through this series, I, I realized Israel had to take, go through the, those two years to experience things that they wouldn't have, you know, maybe not experienced in six months. And it's easy, I think, sometimes you were talking about where you can go to God and say, no, God, my better is better. You ever had those conversations with God? God, what are you doing? Don't look at me like you know what I'm talking about. You said that this morning. You have those conversations? And hopefully we saw over and over again this fall that God is faithful. Now that played out in a real practical way for you personally with work, you know, yeah. specifically this fall. And how did that turn out? We uh, don't know. <laughs> no, uh, I, I just, long story short, a partnership that didn't work out in, uh, was in a lot of prayer before I went into it. Wife was on board, and then I think, pretty sure. And, uh, and then it just, you know, it didn't work out. And not understanding that, uh, just that wasted time, I felt like, through the whole past year, where if I would have been on my own, doing, doing what I do, you know, it, it, which seemed better, you know? So it's like, why did you, why didn't you answer me? And I think going through all that, I know going through all that, I saw things like the Israelites saw in their two years that they, you know, instead of the six months, I, saw, I found things about myself, learned things that I want to, and about God. And, uh, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And I feel like God allows us in the wilderness. And remember, in our series, we talk about the promised land is actually the scary land. Because when we're in the promised land, we think we have our life all put together. And that's been one of our prerequisites if you come to Vintage Grace. You just have to understand that you're messed up. And that that's Okay in the sense that God loves you as you are, but he loves you so much he'll never leave you where you are. So he has you in the wilderness for a season and for a purpose. And that's the big question. Do we trust that it's better is better? Now, Nora, for you, um, your season kind of pivoted a little bit in August as well. You were coming into the Promise series and you found yourself in the doctor's office in August, just before we started the series, and you got some news that you never expected to get. What was that news? Right, well, I don't have any notes. <laughs> I'm in a world of hurt here. But um, yes, uh, I got very ill and was in the hospital and uh, they started the testing and um, um, asked my family back to, for the results and uh, I'm looking at the doctor and he tells me that I have cancer. I could not believe it and it had spread. And to me, that was a death sentence. And I couldn't believe it and uh, I cried too, but it's okay. I, I'm very close to my children and my grandchildren and my amazing husband. And for a minute, it was like, I'm going to be dead tomorrow. All my hair is going to be gone. I'm going to be Which ugly. Which is a big deal, right? I, it's a big deal Not to me. Not for me, but for you. And for me, it's a big deal. I'm a retired hairstylist, and hair is a, it's a big deal. So there were a lot of other things you could hurt the doctor that would have been fine. But if it was no hair, it was no deal. I couldn't believe it. It was I wasn't I wasn't a candidate for it. I was healthy. I was never sick, and and uh, I just it was just the, the worst shock of my life. And I, then I started thinking, 
and uh, what, what can we do here? And I, my parents were pastors. I accepted Jesus when I was nine. Never changed my mind. Was I, did I ever sin? Oh yeah. Did he forgive me? Absolutely. And that faith um, just kind of helped me. I, I just started. I started arguing with him. I had so many people praying for me, on my Facebook, and I said, "God, wait a minute." These people are praying for me. If you don't heal me, what's that going to do to their faith? And then I'm thinking, well, why should God heal me? How many thousands of people have cancer? Why not them? And it's been an argument. And did I have bad days? I had, yes. This last week when Pastor asked me to share, I felt crappy all week. Is that, can I say that in church? I would never say crappy at church. You guys all know I've said it quite a few times. I, Mainly about bad theology. <laughs> Keep going. You're on. I felt really bad, and I said, great, God. And you know, one thing that we don't remember is that there is Satan. Yep. He's, he is real, and he loves to just beat us up yep. and tear us down and say, you know what? You're not going to be healed. This is, you know, what do you think? You know, and just on and on. And I, I would argue with him, and my daughter thinks I'm denying what I have, but somehow I have a peace. I don't know why. I just keep going, and I just feel like God has something for me. Amen. And my family has come alongside, and this church has prayed for me, and I am so grateful. My husband's been amazing. He's just come right along and encouraged, and I'm just praying, yes, no, I don't want to die. Is it bad to die? I don't know. We've never died. I, I just... <laughs> Well, and, and, and what I love, and, and I kind of skipped the verse, so I was trying to be quick earlier, but there's a verse at the end of Hebrews 11 of all the old saints that have passed away that he kind of talks about. And he gets in and he says, they're all waiting for you to live your story. And this is like 38 through 40, if you want to go look at yourself, Hebrews 11. And what he says, the author of Hebrews simply says this, your story matters because there's saints that are ready to go spend eternity with Jesus, and they're going to wait until Jesus is ready to take all of us home together. Will that be a glorious day? Yeah. Now, again, it's not health. It's not job and wealth. It's all about our faith. It's about understanding, do we have faith? And I mean more than that prayer you said when you were four. Do you trust God? And it's the moments in the desert, and it's the moments in the cancer ward, and it's the moments when you're, you're hearing sermons and you're like, do I believe this? Do I actually believe that it's better, it's better? In fact, later this morning, we're going to have a couple of gals who are going to get up and they're going to say, I believe this, and they're going to get baptized. And I want to encourage you, if you want to get baptized this morning, see Kyle in the back. It's like Rahab where she says, I believe this. And, and there's going to be moments in our life where we're tempted to doubt, unemployment, cancer diagnosis, things that are going to go wrong in our life. Those are opportunities that God has provided for us to say, trust me, trust me. Or like for Andy to identify Maybe I've always said it, but I don't see it as much. And Andy, we were even talking also in our time together about you're believing God more and more each day. It's OST. You're believing him for his righteousness in you and through Jesus in you. And it's changing the way you spend your time, treasure, and talent. One example of that happened this fall during the series. What was that one? So, is this thing still on? Yeah. Um, Drew, Drew came up to me and said, Hey, do you want to host a block party? And I said... No way. Because Andy's super social. He loves being in front of people. Yeah. Yeah. But I just, something was stern inside me, and I came up with all these reasons about why I shouldn't do a block party. And I, I was worried that, kind of like what people would think of me. I was worried about my landscaping in my front yard. I was worried about, yeah, you guys are laughing. Yeah. <laughs> You've seen my front yard. Uh, I was just worried about all these different things, and it's just, I couldn't come up with a good reason of why I wouldn't do it. I couldn't think of a good reason why God would not want me to do it. All I could come up with was that I was selfish, and I was doing it for me because I didn't trust him. And that was a scary, scary thought. And, and that's what's amazing, is that guys have these chances to trust him. Through hosting block parties, through loving our neighbors, through coaching Little League, Again, one of the things I've been most encouraged about you is for you to say, hey, I'm trusting God, and I want to show my faith. Well, guess what? When we want to show our faith, what does God give us opportunities to do? Show our faith, to trust Him. 
So thank you for trusting him. Thank you for trusting in word. Thank you for trusting and stepping out in faith. Thank you for telling me in that text that one day, Drew, I don't know if anyone's going to show up. And I'm like, thank, welcome to my world on Saturday evenings. <laughs> don't know if anybody's going to show up. But God is doing something. Can you give these guys a round of applause and just, just thank them for stepping out in faith? The, the point for us is simply this. We believe that life's about stories. God's the author. God's writing stories. And we're going to do something we do a couple times a year, and we don't ever know how it's going to turn out. It's always risky and it's always scary. But you've written your story. Does anyone right now just feel like the Holy Spirit's encouraging them to, to proclaim his goodness? 30 seconds. I've got a mic. You know how selfish I am with the pulpit time? 30 seconds of God's story in your life. Anybody? I don't have my glass on, so I can't see. Run back there, Michael. <laughs> no, no, you're right there. We have a mic. 30 seconds. Telling God's 30 story. Seconds. 30 seconds. Um, well, I didn't write it down, so that's a problem. <laughs> um, I'm not going to talk about the last four months. I'm going to go back a few years, and I feel really weird wearing this. I was like, oh, no, what if he has me talk, and then I have to share what's happened in my life? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, so I was diagnosed with, um, it's actually called schizoaffective disorder about four years ago. And I don't even know if I shared this with Jason, but when I was in, I had to go to the hospital. And when I was in the hospital, I just, my brain wasn't clear. I wasn't on medication yet and doesn't look like I'm on medication now with a sweater, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> it's just for fun. Everybody laugh. Um, and I, I called out to God and I had my Bible with me and there was just so much things going on in my head. And I don't know, he just showed up there. And just through the last four years of just him showing up, because before when I wasn't medicated, I didn't know he was there, to be honest. I struggled so much. And so it's just been life-saving, really, to know that he's with me and okay. to learn that he's always there. And that, um, especially with this wonderful, supportive husband of mine and my kids and friends and just just being able to be open, but I'm just thankful for um, this church and for sermons that keep my mind on track every Sunday, doing what God wants me to be doing and not what the enemy would have me do or what the world would have me do, because it's not just the enemy, it's our world and it's our minds, and there, we're always in a constant battle to to pursue the right thought life that will lead to the right actions in our life that glorify God. Amen. So I would just encourage everyone to think about your thought life and think about, you know, are these thoughts taking me to glorify God? And, you know, what thoughts should I replace them with or think about to, to help me, um, you know, come to church every Sunday and bring my friends or just have a smile for people smiles is so important just if we can just smile at everyone around us and really so they can see that love we have in our hearts that's from Jesus that's from God so thank you everyone yeah. amen and hopefully you have your card and on your card like Christina those are stories that God gave us to share God made Christina in his image so that she could reflect his glory through smiles and through grace. So thank you, Christina, and thank you for these four. I don't want to cut anybody off, but here's my encouragement. My encouragement is plug into a life group and share your story. Invite your neighbor over for a cup of coffee or a glass of wine if you're good with that. I don't care, but in share your story. Share your goodness. Proclaim God's glory in your life and through your life. We've got another story. Emily, where are you at? Come on up. Emily's got a story to share, and I've got a mic right here for you. Ooh, I don't know if I do. Michael? Emily, we've been able to spend some time together lately talking about your story. 
And what has God been doing in your life sharing, sharing your story? Because this is what I love. I actually believe if you treasure Jesus, you're a part of the, the hall of faith with us. Can I just read this from here? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm really nervous because everybody's watching me. Um, but my name's Emily, and I'm 16 years old. Um, so God, when I was born, I was born into a Christian family. So God has always been a figure in my family and life. Um, the majority of my family are Christians, so when I was born, God, born, God church, and Sundays were a normal thing. Um, growing up, I knew of God, and I always knew that he, I always was hearing about His Son Jesus, who died on a cross for us. And during this time, I never really knew what that had to do with me. Um, and as the years began to pass, I got older, and God became a little less important. Um, my family didn't go as often to church, and. Um, because there, there just didn't seem to be any time for him to go. And I became one of those people that only used God for when I needed him the most, not when he needed me. Um, and, um, and then basically around this time, uh, we get, went to church very randomly. It was mostly for Christmas, holidays, you know, just around times when we found that it was better for us to go. Um, and then at one point we found a church in Folsom and this kind of like began my um, curiosity with everything and I, this is where a church that I first started uh, really going to every Sunday and I became uh, more curious and really wanted to go because I really wanted to learn about this, um, this God that like blessed me with what I have. Um, and then... Um, and then, but the sad thing was about a year after of going, my family decided to leave the church. So we began bouncing around from church to church again, looking for the church that we thought would uh, be better for us. And um, it was kind of difficult because my family, we began to be really picky and we started finding the things that were bad about each church instead of finding the things that were good in the church. Um, and I can't really tell you, like, I don't really have a specific time that I can say that, like, I know that um, God saved me. It kind of just all happened in a long stream of time. But um, one of the bigger times was I have an uncle. His name is Lonnie. He's actually over there. <laughs> um, he uh, decided that he wanted to train to become a pastor. So uh, he's a pastor at his church. And he has really been the person to bring us together as a family and keep us close to God. And he's, told, uh, he's been urging us more and more to seek a relationship and that we need to start looking into churches and finding the positive things instead of the negative things. Um, and he basically told my mom um, a while ago that he was interested in baptizing us. So that like really got me curious. I was like, baptizing? I was like, Am I ready for that? Like, should I do it? So I was like, for a while, I was sitting there, and I was like, well, I think I'm really interested in it. So I began to kind of, like, talk with my parents and talk about it and everything. And um, uh, I spent the ne next year just kind of, like, thinking about it. And we weren't, we still weren't really going to church as much. So there was no real place for me to like settle at and like truly begin the path to baptizing or becoming closer to God. Um, then, um, so like, as I said, we st um, stopped looking for things wrong with churches and we began to look for the positive things. So um, I brought the idea back up to my uncle and then he told me to speak to my pastor. So I um, talked to him about it and um, he said that we should start attending church more regularly so that way we can settle. And so that is Vintage Grace. Vintage Grace is now my church, and I'm so grateful for that. And um, basically, so I talked to my uncle, so then I like knew like as soon as I got here, I was so excited because like now I can go to church every Sunday. Like that's what I'm like, glad for. So I can now um, start my relationship with God. So, and I also have um, a mom, dad, brother, and two sisters who are along with me on that journey. And so then that is why I'm here today in front of my church and my family and friends um, to say that I'm a believer and that God's grace has saved me. Amen.
What we, uh, the text I wanted to share with you, Emily, as well as our church, we, we met a couple weeks ago in the office, is in the Old Testament, we talked a lot about walking with God, and Enoch walked with God, and Abraham walked with God. In the New Testament, walking is about relationship, which is what you have because of Jesus. In the New Testament, we don't see the word walk used as often. Anyone know the word that we see more often? It's on the screen. We see run. So right after that Hebrews 11 text of all those people with great faith that trusted God, because life is a roller coaster, because we don't always trust. He says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, family, friends, church, people that, that he just talked about in Hebrews chapter 11, therefore, since that, we say we're not going to mess with sin. We're done with sin. We're done with the temptation of sin. We see it for what it is, and that's what you said. And Jesus said, I'm done with sin. I'm choosing Jesus because he's chosen me. And then he says this, so run the race with endurance. Run it that's set before us. And baptism is just one step in that journey. Baptism doesn't save us. We believe in vintage grace, but we believe it's a public proclamation, which is what Emily's just done, to say, I believe I'm saved by Jesus, covered by his blood. And so baptism is a picture. When Emily goes down under the water, she's going down with Jesus to death, and she's leaving all that sin that so easily hinders us, and she's leaving it in the tomb. And she, like Jesus, we believe, will one day raise again and run with the witnesses and be a part of that. So, Emily, let's step on in here. And that is the encouragement for all of us. Absolutely. Take the boots off for sure. Okay. Give the mic. Yeah. Go, go ahead and head on out. We have one, by Emily's getting ready, we have one more baptism. Kyle, you want to... That ready? All right. Emily, do you trust Jesus for his body and blood and resurrection that covers your sin? It's because you trust Jesus, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So uh, <clears throat> I want to introduce you guys to uh, uh, there we go. Uh, a new friend of mine, just got to meet, named Melissa, uh, and she is here this morning, and, and this wasn't at all planned, but um, God stirred in your heart this morning, Melissa, um, as you were hearing the stories shared, and um, you want to get baptized. So we just share with everybody real quick, um, why do you want to step out today, unplanned, and go ahead and get baptized? Uh, because I believe God's better is better. Amen. He's telling me to jump, and I'm jumping. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Do you trust Jesus for your life and his bodily resurrection that you too might be raised with him? It's because that faith I baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One of the most amazing things that I believe as a follower of Christ is that we have the opportunity to trust him, to treasure him. And it's in the low times that we most see that often. We see that through ready to step out in faith and trust him. But also we see that, that as we walk with Jesus, it is the best possible life ever offered. We believe it's our number one value that there is more joy in Jesus. It doesn't just walk with us in the hard times, as these people shared, but we also celebrate him in the good times because every good gift is from him. In fact, you read this verse, we look to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, he despised the shame, and he's seated at the right hand of the Father, so that one day, too, you and me might be seated with him as well. We might be in heaven with him, and let's be honest, we're not gonna be sitting, right? We're gonna be like chest bumping Jesus if we can. We're gonna be celebrating the goodness of the Father. Would you stand with me this morning? Because what we do at Vintage Grace is we celebrate. We celebrate the fact that we were dead, but God makes us alive. He gives us hope. He changes all circumstances. In fact, it's not even the circumstances that have to change because He is sovereign and He is the joy of the world. As we continue on in this Christmas season, I want to invite you, if you haven't liked us on Facebook yet, to do so. And there's a picture that just got published. And we don't have any special invites. This is my alarm to say, Drew, don't forget to do this. That means we're on time. I want to invite you to share this picture on Facebook this whole week. 
Because what gives us joy is the fact that God gives us grace. Another word to say grace is unmerited favor. I'm a huge Elfie fan. He happened to end up on my shirt this morning. Don't know how. Just showed up. But next Sunday, we're going to talk about grace. We're going to talk about unmerited favor. We're going to talk about what actually gives us joy. And it's not that, that he's watching. It's that he already knows. And that he's given us love and grace and eternal life in him. That is joy. If you have questions about that joy this morning, I invite you to come talk to me. I'm easy to find. Elfie on the shirt. If you're wondering why we do baptisms, you want to be baptized, come talk. If you're wondering about what is so amazing about grace, what is joy? It's the life that he gives us. Come see me. Make a note of your Connect card. Here's the plan this morning. We did one service. We shoved everybody in so that we could have one party. Here's what I need. Nobody move. Instruction time. You're going to check in. You're going to share Elfie, but here's what you're going to do after that. I need you to fold your chairs. We've got some staff that's right now, literally, as I speak, opening up the curtains. We're going to take our chairs and we're going to put them in the racks on the side because we have breakfast pizzas, we have photo booths, we have games, we have cookie bar in the back. Here's what I want to invite you to do this morning. We're just going to hang out and celebrate. We've got a fire that's going to be on. We've got all sorts of different things going on. And the point is this. I want you to tell your story to somebody this morning. I want you to tell your story of the joy of God. So, Father God, would you pray with me? Father God, we thank you that you are good and that your love endures and that you've given us joy to this world, that you are promised peace, that you are, as much as we like Elfie and I like Elfie, that you are better and that your better is better and that we live in that goodness today. And all of his people said, amen. Go in peace. Stay in peace. Serve the Lord and enjoy him together. Enjoy the fire.